There is an amazing XP and money farm spot in Sekiro that I want to touch on in this video that will help you get a lot of skill points to unlock some nice skills. But what are some nice skills that you want to unlock? I will share my favorites in this video and also tell you where to get the first skill tree. So let's get into it. If you enjoyed that, then a like would be super appreciated and let's go. Let's start with that really amazing farm spot that will get you a ton of XP in a short period of time and some nice money as well. So if you want some new skills to help you out or simply just want to unlock some skills in the skill tree that you just unlocked, then totally do this tactic. You can do it really early in the game already. It's in the past, so you need to have the bell from the lady that we discussed in my previous video. I will of course link to that video at the end of this one if you haven't checked it out yet but what you want to do with the bell is like ring it at the temple and then teleport to this version of the world just go down make your way across the bridge and then you will find an idol that you need to claim it's the estate path idol so if you've already been there just go to this idol and you will find a lot of easy to kill enemies here that reward you with 34 xp each so you want to farm them first kill the guy with the torch and then immediately focus on the archers i most of the time use the shurikens to immediately take that first one out and then sprint to the archer like far in the back and kill that one with one trust or just a few slices. Now you want to focus on the other guy that is still alive, easily take him out with just a few slices as well, should not really be a problem. And don't forget to loot the bodies and you will see that that gives you 92 cents so that is pretty good. This is not all though because there are even more enemies in the area nearby, 4 to be exact. Go over the wall and immediately sprint to the archer there to take that one out first. And now just kill the other guys. Sometimes you take them on one by one. Doing a frost attack again is nice. The floating passage skill will be really really handy. Especially when just facing one target. We discussed that skill as well in my previous video. But I saw that some people are having issues getting it. So we'll touch on that a little later in this video as well. But yeah this is the tactic. Kill 8 enemies in total that give you 34 XP each. And you get 2 times 92 sen as well well and it can really only cost you a minute if you totally perfect this run and if sometimes things don't go really as planned then you can always use your healing gourd because they refill anyways when you rest at an idol so just do this over and over again rest at the idol the enemies will respawn kill them repeat and you'll get a lot of skill points in no time skill points that will be super handy to become even stronger so we already discussed in my amazing items you want to get early video that you can get the first skill tree the shinobi arts by talking to the skull the two early skills are great in this skill tree the whirlwind slash to deal some nice slashes onto the target and also the mikiri counter that is actually needed as we already discussed in my previous video to defeat the hunter boss that you will encounter in the past as well and as i said before it can be handy to learn that counter at hand bay the undying if you really want to perfect your timing you of course find this guy at the temple in the shinobi arts skill line you also find the breath of life skill that i really like because it gives you health back per death blow you do and this skill is also really handy for the money and xp farm spot because you will be dealing the death blows left and right so just a nice way to get your health bar back up without using any potions there are two skills in this skill tree that enhance your stealth capabilities and as we discussed in the previous video as well this will be super handy to start a mini boss fight with an insane advantage by already taking away half of their health so being harder to spot is really nice. The final skill in the Shinobi Arts skill tree looks to be really great. The Shadow Rush but I haven't unlocked it yet. Although I'm close though I only need one more skill and then I can unlock it. But I wanted to discuss this because I think it's better to first unlock some skills in the other skill trees that you will find in the game. Before really focusing on one skill tree and maximizing that. There are for example some skills like the Shinobi Karma ones that just give you one extra emblem so you can use your tools more often often that you don't really want to spend your early skill points on because it's just not that good so you can better hold on to your skill points and spend them in another skill tree before you unlock some skills that you don't really need just to get to that final skill now i think it's smarter to first unlock some skills in the prosthetic arts section you unlock this skill tree after you find three prosthetic tools and i told you about four tools in my recent video so again i will link to that at the end go find them and then you unlock this skill tree the first skill that you totally want to get here is the chasing slice that lets you do a slash after for example throwing a shuriken or using other tools and i found that this one is really nice in the money and xp farm spot as well or actually just when fighting multiple enemies like just throw your shuriken and then follow up with a nice slice to interrupt the enemies as well and also nice of course against ranged enemies in this farm spot so you close the gap and then 
immediately take them out. I think the Nightjar Slash is also great, that closes the gap and lets you do a ton of damage onto the targets. Upgrading it further in the skill tree makes it so that you are able to do this ability in both directions. So you can also use it to get away. So yes, it's pretty easy to get the first two skill trees, but what about the third one? Well, you can find it the moment you kill the first big main boss in the game on the battlefield, the guy on the horse. In this area, you can namely get a quest that will reward you with this skill tree. So first though, you want to travel to the Ashina Castle Gate. Again, that's the idol that opens up after the Beating this main boss and to get to this main boss you just want to follow the main path of the Ashina outskirts you'll really get there eventually so when you are at this idol you don't want to go through the gate but instead turn around and go up the stairs to the right you will find a building that you want to enter and inside you see this guy that you have to talk to because he gives you the quest to kill the rats close by and these rats are by the way little annoying enemies that you should be able to kill easily if you got the right tools so now that you got the quest we you want to return to that Ashina Castle Gate idol that we talked about earlier because here you want to follow the road to find the rats. You will first find a regular enemy here that you want to take out and then go up here up that roof and then sneak up to these enemies. Use your loaded axe to nuke their heads that are like shields and then you will easily be able to take them out but be careful though because there is another one of these rats close by that does not wear a shield hat but will still cause some trouble. You by the way get 90 XP for killing these enemies so that is three times 90 xp with an idol close by so this might be a pretty nice xp farm spot as well but it's significantly later in the game than the one i showed you earlier in this video because you already have to kill the first main boss while the estate path that i showed you earlier only requires you to find the bell from the lady you do not need to kill any mini bosses whatsoever and i think that in the end if you like make the calculation it's about the same amount of xp for the same amount of time so i still think that the estate path is the better option but yeah going back to the quest because now that you killed the rats you want to return to that npc and then you will receive the third skill tree that already has some nice skills in the early section that you totally want to get like the easy monji that will let you do high posture damage onto the target but it also restores your posture as well so really great for boss fights for sure later on in the skill tree we find an upgraded version of this that lets you immediately follow up with another similar attack making for a great counter to easily break the posture of your enemy and you can combo this skill with the descending carp from the ashina arts skill tree that lets you after a successful deflect deal more damage to enemy postures from all sources so including the inji monji so yes there are a lot of nice active skills to unlock and switch between and another one is of course the floating passage one that I already showed you in my previous video where you have to collect five carp skills to unlock it at the hidden shop that is next to the large bridge in the Hirata estate all the info in that other video but I saw some people like in the comments saying that they had issues getting the five skills in that location because I found three carps like nearby the shop one under the bridge and one on the shore but some people are having issues so I thought let's share another location of one of those carps you can namely find one if you follow the path that opened after killing the shinobi hunter mini boss so we already went over how to kill that boss again in that other video so then a new path opens up and you want to go there but immediately go to the left use your grappling hook and then just fall into the water and then swim all the way to the waterfall and you should be able to see a carp there it's easily spotable and then you can kill that with a trust attack to have another skill so you hopefully have enough skills for this ability. Oh, and by the way, while we are in the water to get that carp anyway, so why not get another tool that is nearby? Use your grappling hook to get to this small piece of land. And here you can slice some bamboo to open up a new area. Climb here all the way up and then you will see a small temple that is being guarded by this mini boss. But you don't have to kill him. Just ignore him, dodge his attacks and focus on opening the small temple behind him to find the Mist Raven tool. I also think that you cannot get hit while opening the temple so that is nice. And after you get it you can of course put it on your arm by visiting the temple again. While it did not 
doesn't really make sense for the topic of this video, I thought it was still nice to get while we're at it, right? We'll have a way more substantial video up with more secret items and things you can find in the game really, really soon, including more awesome tools that you want to use. So totally subscribe for way more Sekiro videos if you haven't already. If you find awesome things in the game, totally let me know via Twitter, at your Raptor or Instagram your Raptor or in the comments of this video. Like the video to support the channel and you can see that other video that I talked about multiple times in this video by clicking on the screen. For now, have fun playing and I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.